Okay, a couple things to note before we get started here. Um, it is in uh, standard open G tuning. I, I capo or tune the fifth string up to A, even though we don't use the fifth string at all in this song. Why do I do that? Because in the event, this song has a lot of strumming. It's in the key of A minor. You guys hearing that? Is that coming through? Yeah, it should be coming through. Um, in the event that you accidentally hit the fifth string, it's going to sound a lot better being that note than any other note. Because it's the root, no root note of the scale, it's not going to sound terrible. Okay? So standard open G tuning, we're playing with a guitar pick. This is not three finger, it's not claw hammer, it's guitar pick. Um, another thing to keep in mind is that these symbols here, I want everyone to pay attention to these. Are you seeing the mouse? Yeah, there we are. So these, the things that look like little, like, like, uh, I don't even know, little arches. Fuck this goddamn camera, dude. This keeps happening. It's driving me just absolutely mental. I got to get a USB extender for this camera. Because the fucking cable is just always sitting right at hand, right at hand height. Okay. Um, so these symbols here, the one that looks like an arch is a down pick. Okay. Meaning I'm going to be moving the pick in this direction. Okay. This is important. The one that looks like a V, this one here, is an upstroke. Meaning I'm going to be moving the pick upwards towards me. Okay. A lot of what we're going to be doing in this song um and especially in the faster parts is doing this alternate picking where we're just constantly keeping this sort of uh rhythm this up and down rhythm especially at that ending part i'm going up and down the entire time the reason for that is it's a lot more efficient than trying to if i for example if i try to play that same part with all down strokes i have to bring the pick back to this side of the string See, I can't even, I can't even play it. I gotta play into it. It would be insanely difficult. It's inefficient. I, since I have to move my hand back down to this side of the string anyway, I may as well just, I may as well just do um, alternate picking. That's how you're going to be able to get that fast picking, okay? Um, in the other parts, like this part here, the chorus, um, <clears throat> we're doing a lot of down picking. So anytime there's like, if it's an eighth note and there's that space between the notes, it's fine to do all down picking. But when we need to start getting faster, like when we're doing some of these strums, it'd be very hard to go... You don't want to do that, right? Okay. So that's a long-winded way of me saying pay attention to these because they're going to help you. These symbols are going to help you. Okay. So we're going to start with the chorus. We're going to do the same thing that we always do. We'll play through slow, medium, and fast. Um, by the way, this song kind of doesn't, it almost doesn't have a chorus. It's kind of like two different verses, but I called this first part the chorus and then this second part with the chops here. Um, why aren't you seeing what's going on here? There we go. Um, this part here, I called the verse just to differentiate them. Okay. So we're going to start with that. start with that part we'll start with it slow i think i was going to do 70 bpm and then 100 and then 130 is again at an approximate um approximate tempo okay so let's start with 70 okay so we're going to start nice and slow we're starting with the ring finger on the seventh fret and then we're barring the fifth fret these two strings with this finger 
Okay. And then you'll notice once I get down past, I can keep the bar here when I'm on the seventh fret on the fourth string, the sixth fret, and the fifth fret. And then when I go down to the fourth fret, I can no longer bar because I need this finger to hit the fourth fret. So then I'm going to take these two fingers, index and ring finger, and place them on the fifth fret of the second and third strings. And then I'm going to go down one further, and then I'm going to switch the uh, uh, pinky and ring finger are going to be pressing down on the fifth uh, fifth fret of the second and third strings, like a guitar power chord. Okay. So let's play through it quickly, or sorry, slowly, and we'll increase the speed. Um, let me know how the volume is of the guitar pro tab here. And I got to scroll down a bit. All right. go through it once they're slow if you got to watch that again on youtube just back it up okay simple like a pimple um the theme in this song is this descending bass line or it's not really a bass line but just a descending line okay that's happening kind of throughout the whole song so we're gonna be doing that a lot okay let's go um up to 100 bpm and sorry, I'm not really watching the chat a whole lot because I know I'll get distracted. So let's try this again here. It's a little faster this time, so we'll go through it. Um, go through it twice again. If these, um, I talked about this on the spaghetti one, but if these kind of alternate ending things aren't making sense to you, don't worry about it. Just listen to the song and you'll get the structure. This is just so it's just to prevent me from copying and pasting. If you know how the alternate endings work, then you're you're groovy. <clears throat> All right, let's go again here. next i'm um, sorry i just realized that the thing's not scrolling the way it's supposed to give me one second here why are you why you do this there's always something okay i'll move that down there i want you to be able to see the fretboard and the tab kind of Okay, that should be better now. It should scroll properly. We'll see. Okay, um, so basically what this means, first two times that you play through this part, you're going to play this as the ending, this here. Yeah, it's not. There we go. And then the, uh, the third time you're going to play this, which is basically we just go back to the strums. Okay. Easy peasy. Let's go through it one more time. Then we're going to do that three or that six, eight variation part after this. Um, all right, 130.
it's still not fucking scrolling. I don't know why it's doing this. We got one more idea. We're going to do that one more time, actually, just because it hasn't been scrolling properly. Okay, I'm going to try this. Might just have to literally have just the one thing. Okay, let's do that one more time. Sorry about that. <clears throat> It's not where that part comes in, by the way. It's just because the tab is auto-playing the next part. Okay, that's it. That's the I call that the chorus. You could call it the verse. It's kind of a weird song that way. It kind of doesn't have a, a chorus. and uh, It kind of almost has two verses, but whatever. Uh, let me check the chat here real quick. Hotline, it's good to see you. Fox Angel, good to see you. Anyone I'm missing as you're coming in. Um, try not to miss any questions here either. If you guys have questions. There we go. It's scrolling now. Yeah, sorry about that, guys. <clears throat> yeah, I, I know, Dominic. <laughs> okay, so that is kind of the main... I call, I would call that like the main riff of the song. So if you're trying to play this, the trick is going to be keeping this consistent even though your fingers are going to be changing. So it's starting with the bar on the first... Uh, First finger, index finger bar, the uh, second and third strings, and then it changes to uh, index and, sorry, ring and middle, and then ring and uh, pinky as we move down that chromatic scale. And then this is just a regular uh, E7 chord. Now, in this second chorus, there's a part where um, we switch to like a 6-8 timing and we go... Okay, we're going to practice that part next. It's very simple. Um, it's just a time signature change. So if we're counting in 4-4, four, four, it's 1. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. This switches to a, a six, eight, or a three. You could count it three, four. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. 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 Okay, so we're switching to that. And that just happens one time. And then it comes right back to uh, line number five, I believe it is. I think I wrote it on here too. So here's the chorus variation. This is what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, and then right at the end. So we go back to, uh, or not line, bar number five here okay the the bar the bars are all numbered right here that's four five six tiny little number tough to see but we just go right back to there so we do our and we go back into it the regular way okay so we'll do this uh slow medium and fast as well I just got to change it up here. So again, slow is 70 BPM. Medium is um, 100 BPM. And then fast is 130 BPM for this one. Uh, excuse me. All right. Oops. Where are you? Seems fast. 70, okay. All right, let's see what happens here. OK, 
Okay? Easy, man. Nothing to it. You just got to count in your head a little bit differently. So you're counting to six instead of to four, right? <clears throat> uh, let's go medium speed on that one. 100 BPM. go to line five there again just ignore that that's guitar pro just auto playing the next part simple like a pimple we'll do the fast version now 130 bpm okay that is the main kind of riffage of the song <clears throat> um it's it's not that bad it's the same thing we're keeping these two notes for the most part as kind of like drone notes the fifth fret on the second and third strings and we're just doing that descending line until we get to the e and then we're just a regular e or e7 Next part, I called this the verse. This is the Miss Mary and her men. Okay, and this is just backbeat chops. So we're holding, it's a A minor shape. Seven, seventh fret on the uh, uh, fourth string. These same two, same two notes as the, uh, in the chorus, right? the bar on the fifth fret of the second and third strings, and then the seventh fret on the first string. Okay, and that's pretty much what it's gonna be. So we're gonna start with uh, with one pluck. Now, to make this chop sound, all I'm doing is I'm lifting my left hand. Right now, I'm pressing the strings down into the frets. What I'm gonna do to make this chop sound is I'm just going to lift my left fingers very slightly so that my fingers are still touching the strings, but the strings aren't touching the frets. And that's what's gonna give it that, that dead sound, okay? So we're just pressing. If you look at my left hand, you can see it's kind of squeezing. And this is where it's really important to not hit the fifth string because you have no real way of muting that fifth string right now. So I don't want to go. You're going to get that ringing fifth string. You don't want that. You just want that dead note. Okay, and we just run through that until the very, very end. And then we just switch the chord uh, slightly. So we're going. We're going to take the uh, uh, middle finger on the left hand and put it on the sixth fret. Everything else stays the same. Okay. Then we do another chop where we go back to the original A minor chord. And then we're going to put that sixth or the um, middle finger on the sixth fret again. But then we're going to move everything down one fret. So that's the last hit. Okay. So this last measure here is... Okay, other than that, other than those two changes, we just hang on that A minor chord the whole time for this part. Okay, so we'll do this slow, medium, and fast as well. Exactly, you're muting the note. Okay, here comes the change. Okay, pay close attention to that change. We'll go through it again.
Okay, does that make sense? <clears throat> Let's go. 100 BPM now, same thing. So this is the easy part of the song, right? This is just like the 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 point of the banjo at this part in the song is is more percussive than like melodic or anything, right? We're just holding that beat down. Okay. Let's go again. <laughs> Good old chop beat, exactly. Offbeat chops, nothing to it. <laughs> circusy, it is kind of circusy. <laughs> <clears throat> not easy, not easy to see what change. This here. It's a very subtle change. So my middle finger is just going down onto this uh, sixth fret here. Open again to the regular A minor. And then I put the six, the, this exact same thing, and then I just move everything down one fret. <clears throat> okay, so I'll do that fast now. Oops. Tarpo is kind of weird. You got to scroll all the way up to change the tempo for the whole track. And I always like to change it for the whole track because uh, otherwise it'll just be a fucking mess by the end. The tempo will be changing every part. Um, okay, here we go. almost done there's not a whole lot left there is this slow down part which is the bridge which is okay that's the next part and we're only going to do this one slow or sorry medium and fast because it's already a slowed down part it's not as fast as the other ones if you still need it slower on youtube um you can just like adjust the playback settings right on youtube <clears throat> okay so this part is kind of weird okay if you look at this up here this denotes what we call triplet feel or swing feel okay i've talked about this in some of the previous uh tutorial videos but essentially what this means is you're going to swing the beat okay so normally a beat is just um it's just steady and every note on the beat is the exact same duration so dun 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 with this sw uh the swing feel we're gonna have one note that's slightly longer and one that's slightly shorter. So instead of bump, 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 it'd be bump, ba bump, ba bump, ba bump, ba bump, ba bump. The first one is a little bit longer than typical, and the second one's a little bit shorter than typical, if that makes sense. Okay. So if this part, this is the part that I'm talking about, by the way, in the song, it's the slowdown part where we're all going, oh, doing that thing. If that was straight, uh, straight without the swing beat, it would sound something like. I might have swung that that ending there actually, but it would sound like that. Okay, with the swing feel, it's that. Um, 
Yeah, it's it's kind of it's hard to it's a little bit hard to explain. If it doesn't really make sense, just listen to the song. Listen to the song, and you'll you'll kind of figure out the rhythm. <clears throat> so we're gonna do this part just medium, so 100 BPM, and then 130 BPM since it's already uh, it's already pretty slow, and it's swung, so it it feels a little slower than than normal anyway. Oh, sorry. Before we keep going, this is the exact same thing as the chorus. <laughs> The only difference is that we have, uh, instead of doing, hitting these two notes at the same time, like a chord, we're going to hit them separately, starting with the second string and then the third string. Okay, but it's the exact same idea. I'm just going down. My left hand is going to do the same thing. Just make that switch and then make this switch and then to the E. Okay. Um, again, pay close attention to these these symbols up here. So I'm going down. I'm jumping over that string and then doing another down pick. And then on my way back to that fourth string again, I'm going to up stroke or up pick that note. Back down again. So it's down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down. Okay, that's the pattern. So here we go. Okay, and that repeats more than twice. Uh, I think it goes four times or something like that. And then on the very last one, we just we just strum the the open or sorry the A minor shape here. Okay, and that's not in the tab, but it just. And then the voices keep going. Okay, just so you know, I didn't bother. I didn't bother throwing a whole another alternate ending on and all that just just for that. You should be able to figure that out on your own. Okay, so let's do that again. We'll do it up to speed. Again, up to speed is 130. Uh, where are we here? Bridge. Another thing I, I I just realized that I didn't tab this out, um, but when at the end of this kind of phrase here, so where are we? We're uh, this part here, this do 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 do. Usually what I'll do, Dominic with the gifted sub, thanks man. Usually what I'll do is I I have it as an open uh, an open D, and you can certainly play it that way. It's fine, um, but what I what I I do a lot live is I just slide this back up. So I'm sliding the middle finger is on this uh, the second fret of the fourth string, and then I slide up, and then my uh, ring finger catches the uh, the seventh fret, so that puts my hand back in the right position to do this again. forgot to put that in the tab <clears throat> okay simple now we're back the ending we're back if you look at this part up here this just means we're back to normal time no more swing feel okay um now we're kind of doing the same thing with these anytime you see the x's here it's a dead note so it's that same thing where we take our we take our left hand we keep it in the same spot but we're just not squeezing the frets or the strings down onto the frets we're just putting our placing our fingers on top of the strings to produce this sound, 
okay? And I want you to watch my right hand when I'm doing this part. It is just going to go up and down the entire time, but that doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to hit the strings every time, okay? This is like, it's a little hard to explain, but you have to be very like, when you're looking at the tab, be very conscious of these notes here that don't have the little double line on them. Those are the longer notes, okay? So what I'm gonna, it, it's gonna sound like this. You notice my hand is never doing, it, it's just doing this, my right hand, the entire time, okay? The trick is, com is combining the right hand and the left hand timing so that when you're, you're essentially doing this, but then with the proper timing, you're gonna start pressing down on that chord with the, uh, with the left hand. Make sense? Does that make sense? And then you'll notice it's even a little weirder because some of these notes are a little bit longer and they don't have that chop in between. So for example, this very first one that I hit, there's no chop right after. I just bring my hand back up and I skip the strings. And then you'll see the next, the chop is the, uh, if you're looking up here, it's the next down stroke. So it's If you're new to this, what I would recommend is getting it solid this way first. So just start by placing your left uh, left hand on the strings and just start with this. So just up and down chopping and then try and get the timing right. And then once you get that down, then you can think about these odd little ones that you skip. It'll sound perfectly fine if you play it the way that I just played it. But like this very, the second like chop here is skipped. So instead of going, or sorry, uh, it's, so if I really slow it down instead of, it's skip chop, sorry. Skip chop and then. Okay, does that make sense? Again, I would strongly encourage you for the time being, if you're new to this, and especially if you're like not used to playing with a guitar pick and you're not used to strumming and stuff, start with this. And then add. So my right hand is not changing anything that it's doing. It's just my left hand. that make sense it's a weird song there's lots more going on than i thought too i like i went sat down to make the tab yesterday and i was just like holy fuck man the timing gets kind of weird with that swing beat stuff and like all this shit it took me it took me a little longer than i was expecting um okay so we're gonna go through this we'll go slow medium fast as usual beep 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 dee, dee. and then we have the so this is the the first part of the ending i called it ending a in the tab here. And then the second part of the ending is the, the fast ripping at the end. And that's the next part. Uh, okay. So let's start here.
Okay, so um, again, it's that same theme that's happening throughout the entire song with these two, uh, the uh, third and or sorry, second and third strings, kind of barred at the fifth fret, and we're just moving this down. Okay, the only difference in this part is now we're doing what we're doing on the fourth string. We're also doing on the uh, first string. Okay, so it's, and then I move down. So now I have to take my uh, my middle finger, place it on the sixth fret, and then my index finger goes on the sixth fret here. Next one's easy. It's just a full bar since everything is on the fifth fret. And then here we go to a D7 shape. So right, what we're doing here is uh, second fret on the third string, first fret on the second, and then this kind of stretch with the pinky up to the... Uh, fourth fret that we can play a d7 like this okay but the reason we put this fourth fret in there is because we're preserving this right we're preserving that chromatic walk down i hit that stretch with the pinky and then we're going f e and then an A minor again, but we're ending the A minor down here instead of up here. Why? Because of this note. I want to end. Okay, if I play the A minor up here, then I'm going to end on that note, which is where I want to start it the next time I go back up. Does that make sense? So... Okay, so another thing I would recommend is practicing these changes. These are going to take you a while because they're kind of uncommon chords. And in fact, I think I, I think I just play the regular E there. I don't do that third fret there. I just do the regular E. I think in the tab I might have the uh, the third fret in there. Yeah, I think in that part, I, I don't actually. It's kind of funny. Sometimes when I sit down to write these tabs, it's like, because you, you're going through it note by note really slow. And it's not till I play it fast again later that I'm like, oh, wait, that that's a little bit wrong. So you don't have to worry about that third fret there. It's just here. Okay, so one more time. Here, we're just doing that chromatics walk down. So let's do this at uh, medium tempo now, 100 BPM. Simple like a pimple. And now, <laughs> ignore everything I said about the third fret. Now that the muscle memory is kicking in and I'm just doing it, I think I do use that third fret. It's not going to matter either way, to be honest. You want to play the E, you want to play the E7, it's going to sound, because it's fast. It's not going to make a difference. The only, I think, upshot to having this E minor here, Dominic with the gifted sub again. Thanks, bro. The upside to having this here is now when I do that little thing with my left hand where I just stop squeezing, now there's no open, uh, the string isn't open. If I don't have my pinky here and I do that chop, right, all the, uh, all the strings are dead except for this open um, second string, and you're going to get that ringing. So if you place the pinky there, you're still going to get that, that you want without the, the ring. Okay, uh, one more time, up to speed. And this will be on the Dead South YouTube page later today. Now we're on. 
on to the fun part. Now is the crazy part. We're going to do this slow, medium, fast. This is the end of the song. Okay. Now, it's the same fucking thing, except for the little run at the end here. We're doing, again, the theme is just variations on this. The whole song is just variations on that, right? We start with... We head into the choruses, which is we just hang on that one spot. Or sorry, in the verse. Okay, we do the bridge where we do this exact same thing. We're just doing, we're just uh, plucking these individually instead of um, instead of together, and we're adding the swing feel. Okay, and then after that, we do the same thing again. Only this time, we're adding, we're doing full chord chops, and we're adding the first string into that melody line as well. Okay. It's the same damn thing. And now here we're going to do it one more time. This time we're not going to use the, uh, we're not going to use the fifth fret on the, the second string. Okay. We're actually going to go from fifth to seventh fret on the, on the third string instead. The, uh, fourth string is still doing the still doing the same thing okay so here okay and then this is where it gets a little bit different we have a little weird chord shape here where I'm barring with the third uh, barring across the third fret and then my uh, uh, ring finger on the left hand is going to go fifth fret on the uh, on the third string. Again, we're preserving that fifth fret on the third string. And then a regular E chord. And then we jump back up here for the... Okay, and that's the business, that part right there. Okay, so it's again, it's just this variation on the theme. It's like, how many different ways can I play this? Is basically what this song is, right? <clears throat> so again, so I'm going uh, down, down pluck, and then for these little quick, um, like three sixteenth uh, notes there, it's down, up, down. So down, down, up, down, 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 up, down, 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 up, down, etc. Another thing I want to point out is the importance of this open note here, this open G. Okay, when we get down to the bottom, we get to this uh, this E chord. So if I was just going, um, sorry, um, fourth string, third, second, and then back down, and I continue to hold the E chord, I have to press the first fret with this finger, and then one beat later, I have to be all the way up here, starting this part. Okay, that's gonna be almost impossible to hit that and then be here in time. Okay, so when I'm playing that E chord, I go bum, 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 and then I let go. My hand starts to move up towards the next position as I'm plucking that open uh, G string. And then I'm ready to go. Right? And then actually when I'm ending this phrase, I'm sliding, I'm bringing my, uh, sorry. I'm bringing my uh, ring finger and I'm sliding this down. It, it makes more sense to play. It's gonna feel more natural, I should say, to play this, um, like the start of the phrase again. So like, because this part repeats itself, this here. It's going to feel more natural to play this with your index finger, but then you're not in the right spot to start going. It's the same sort of thing I just talked about coming from here to here. So when you're playing parts, try and think about like strategizing um, your open strings and, and you have to think ahead of which finger is going to go where to set you up for the next part, okay? So at the end of this phrase, uh, I always got to play into it. <laughs> I 
I slide back down, okay? And it's a quick little slide, but then I'm ready for this part again. that makes sense um and then this part here this little run if you've played like metal guitar this is going to be easy if you've never played like with a with a flat pick it's going to be hard but this is just literally like there's like a million trivium songs that do this this like type of scale i like to say it's everywhere in metal so if you've done any like metal playing it'll be pretty easy and again Pay very close attention to these guys here, right? You'll notice every single one is, I go down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, because it's fast and it needs to be played the most efficient as possible. So watch my right hand when I play it. It never, it never does two up pl plucks in a row, it never does two down plucks in a row. And you'll notice that even it ends on an up, on an up stroke because the next one, to repeat has got to be a down. Okay, so I think that's all the info you need. Again, we're doing alternate endings here. Uh, the very last time we do. And then we just end with an uh, A minor. Quick switch to E and back to A. So you're only doing this run twice. You go through, you do the jazz hands part twice. Once by the, like banjo does it once by itself. And then band kicks in here. Okay, and then now we go to this. time and then on this one we're just strumming out the end okay so we're going to play through that slow medium and fast and then you know how to play miss mary come on let me change the damn tempo sense and again um so i didn't mention this so i'm keeping again i'm keeping this uh index finger on the fifth fret of the third string as long as i can so the the five seven five is going to be with index and pinky because ring finger is holding here and then i'm going to go uh, middle finger here Still doing the 575 with the pinky. Now I can use the ring finger or the pinky for this one, since this is just gonna, the index finger is gonna be barred, whatever's more comfortable. I tend to switch to the, uh, the ring finger here. And then now, now that we're down here, now this finger, the middle finger is gonna have to hit the fifth fret. And we're gonna do that with the, uh, the 575 with the middle finger and the pinky. And then now here we're done with the, so this is just third fret bar again, um, uh, ring finger on the fifth fret, regular old E chord. And then that open G 
which I use that open note as time to bring my hand up here where it needs to be. And then I'm sliding the, in, uh, the ring finger down so that I'm in the proper position to start this again. Okay, let's try it again at 100 BPM. to go to the, the thing again. Uh, the mistake I made there was when I did the run, I hit it with this finger. When this, it should have been hit with this finger. Okay. Last time, we're going to rip through it one more time. And then we'll play the whole song, and then that's that. So 130 BPM, fast part. See if I can remember to hit those strums at the end. I think live we might do it one more one more time than we do on the recording, to be honest. Because I feel like when I play this live, I play that run three times. But maybe I'm just maybe I'm just going insane. Miss Mary. Okay? So let's go through, let's play the whole song. Hey, a round of applause for you, Nikki. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. All right, let's find it. We'll play along with the actual song here. All right. Hold up, I'm just going to turn that up a bit. I'm just gonna sorry <laughs> fuck third time's the try I'm gonna actually turn the tab off since it's not gonna be able to scroll along with the actual song you might just be get a little better view of my uh, of my left hand this way Chops, all down strokes. 
Again, the subtlety is just in the left hand here. Mary, if you're watching this on YouTube, I highly recommend just like watch each section. Hey, round of applause for all you guys. Elanuka, Sarah, Jamie, rounds of applause is Nikki. Holy fuck. Holy fuck. I'm going to be here all day listening to this. <laughs> My God. Okay, slow down each section as much as you need. There's lots going on with the way that the left hand is moving, right? There's lots of just jumping around to ensure that this <laughs> that fucking applause. A lot of jumping around to ensure. Okay? And the theme. I'm just gonna fucking wait. Jesus Christ. And then the theme of the song is this. That's this song is just how many different ways can I play that? That's what this song is. How many different rhythms, picking patterns, etc. That's essentially what this song is on the banjo. Okay? We did it. That's it. It'll be done. Uh, it'll be up on the YouTube channel, Dead South YouTube channel later today. I gotta have a nap after this.